All right, hopefully this works out okay. I tried this once before and it my phone stopped recording. So, um, so we're gonna do a video lecture of um, EE320. So um, just to go back to where we were last time, we identified last time that um, if we have a, um, a, an, an op amp circuit with, a, <laughs> with an open loop gain and a feedback path gain, we can write the loop gain as L is equal to A, E, B. And we can also, we can further find that in the ideal case, in the ideal case, the, um, the closed loop gain of our amplifier is gonna be one over B. And we also know that the deviation from ideal is gonna be A ideal Sorry. It's going to be A ideal times oops, 1 over 1 plus 1 over L. And we can also write that as A ideal times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus L. And that allows us to write the error, the gain error as, as a percentage is 100 over one plus L. Okay, so, um, so this allows us to do a lot of stuff. So basically this is telling us what's the relationship between the ideal open loop gain of a system and the actual open loop gain of the system based on the non-ideal impacts of having a, a finite um, open loop or uh, open loop gain. Yeah. So now what we can do is we can sort of go back and we can sort of see how those changes, without having to redo everything, we can see how those changes in open loop gain can impact um, the changes in the closed loop gain of our system. So let's go through a couple of example problems. So, so remember these equations. You can look at them in your book in your notes. And let's do a problem where we say, so we're going to do example 1.7a, where we say um, we are going to, uh, we're going to find the loop gain needed for a gain error of less than 0.1%. So what loop gain do we need to have a gain error of less than 0.1%? So that's easy enough to do. We can just do, um, we can just say our gain error, as I just wrote, is 100 over 1 plus L. So, and we wanted this to be less than or equal to 0 0.1. So we can simply write that as one plus L has to then be greater than or equal to 1000. So L has to be greater than or equal to 999. Uh, <coughs> okay, so in that, so do we have to have a loop gain of 999 or greater? And we'll say that's about equal to a thousand. And just kind of for our further calculations, we'll say we pretty much need a loop gain of a thousand to get a gain error of less than 0.1% in an op amp system. So the next thing is we say, if we were trying to build an op amp with an open loop gain of 50, the question now is, um, what are we going to need for? Um, sorry, the question is, if we're going to build an op amp with an open loop gain of 50. So this is like a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 50 or something like that. The question is then, what open loop gain, we, what open loop gain would we need to have in our op amp to achieve a gain error of less than 0.1? So we know the loop gain has to be 1,000, pretty much. So we're saying, how good of an op amp do we need to buy? If we want to make a gain of 50 op amp, how good of an, of an amplifier do we have to buy to make sure our error is less than 0.1%? Okay, so we know that in this case, if our, if our gain is going to be 50, if A is going to be 50, then in the ideal case, that means that 1 over B has to be equal to 50, and that means B has to equal 0 0.02. Um, so B has to be 0 0.02, so we'd have to have a feedback network with an attenuation of you know, 0 0.02, so we'd have to basically divide by 50 that feedback. That's how we get gain in our overall amplifier design. 
Um, so then knowing that b has to be equal to 0 0.02, and knowing that our open our loop gain has to be 1,000 or greater, we can say that L equals a epsilon times b. So we can say 1,000 equals a epsilon times 0 0.02. So a epsilon equals 1,000 divided by 0 0.02, which is going to be 50. So that means we have to buy an op amp with an open loop gain of 50,000 or more. So we have to have a differential amplifier that has a gain of 50,000 or more to, achieve, to build an, an op amp circuit with a, um, with a closed loop gain of 50 or greater with an error of less than 0.1%. There's something else we can do. If we know the error of our op amp, another thing that we can do is we can just say, we can tweak it. We can sort of tweak the feedback network to compensate for that error in our op amp. Um, so let's look at this case. Let's look at what would our feedback, what would our feedback network gain have to be in actuality to get an exact gain of 50 for a system where, um, where we're compensating for this non-ideal effect. So the question is, so, so let's say we have a system where in fact L is equal to 1,000, which means the open loop gain is 50,000, and our gain is, well, has to actually be 50. So how are we gonna do that? So we can go back and we can look at equation, um, we can look at equation uh, 1.40 in our book, and we can see, just stepping back to this amplifier case, we can see that our gain is gonna equal a epsilon over 1 plus a epsilon b. And we know in this case that we want, oops, so this is going to be 50 equals, we know that our, um, our, our open loop gain has to be 50,000. So it's going to be 50 times 10 to the third divided by 1 plus 50 times 10 to the third times b. We can solve this expression for b. And when we do, we find that b is equal to 0 0.01998. So what we can do is, so we said in the ideal case, b would have had to have been 0 0.02. But in the case where we're trying to design a feedback network that compensates for the non-ideal effects of the op amp, one thing we can do is we can tweak that feedback network to get a little extra gain through the feedback network to compensate for the lack of, of, of open loop gain in our op amp. So if we design a feedback network with a gain of 0 0.01998, then we would actually achieve an op amp with it. We would achieve a circuit with an actual open loop gain of, or sorry, with an actual closed loop gain of 50 in this case. So in the non-ideal case where our open loop gain was only 50,000, we could have a feedback gain that is tweaked a little bit, 0 0.01998, and that would result in a system with a closed loop gain that is actually 50. <clears throat> so we're compensating for that finite open loop gain by tweaking the feedback gain. Okay, so that's one thing we can do. Um, okay, so this brings us to a question of, uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit though why that's not always perfect. In a little bit, we're gonna talk about sort of why we can't necessarily always rely on this, um, but, or why we can't necessarily rely on this to work perfectly across all range of amplitudes and frequencies for our op amp. Um, but for now, we're gonna talk about another concept, and that is, um, and that is um, gain desensitivity. So we're basically saying, so we're gonna look at in an op amp circuit, um, what terms are sensitive to what? So like what gain terms, how is gain, how is the gain sensitivity sensitive to things like open loop gain or to things like feedback um, path gain and things like that. So we're going to look at, at the overall sensitivity of the behavior of the op amp to changes in different terms. So one thing is if we go back to equation 1.40 in our book, and I'm not going to rewrite it, I just wrote it up here, and we differentiate um, we differentiate that equation um, in terms of the gain with respect to, we differentiate gain with respect to um, the open loop gain. We can, we can derive an equation for um, 
essentially the change in our gain of our system as a function of deviations in open loop gain. So we can see how much changing open loop gain is going to affect the overall behavior of the circuit. And when we do that, um, when we do that, we find that, oops, that the derivative of our gain is 1 over 1 plus L times the derivative of the, oops, times the derivative of the open loop gain. So what is this saying? This is saying that changes in the overall, changes in the closed loop gain of our system are going to be proportional to changes in the open loop gain, but it's going to be attenuated by this ratio 1 over 1 plus L. What does that mean? Normally L is going to be, for most op-amp circuits, it's going to be fairly large. So what this is saying is that as long as L, the loop gain of our system, is fairly large, we can have fairly big changes in our, um, in our open loop gain, and it'll have a minimal effect on the closed loop gain. You already kind of know this, right? You already know when we talk about op-amps, you've in lab in previous classes built circuits with op-amps. You've used your op-amps, you normally don't even really pay attention to what the open loop gain is. Maybe it's 20,000, maybe it's 80,000, maybe it's 200,000. But for the most part, when you build the circuit, when you build that circuit, you get a pretty, you get a result that's pretty close to the result you expected. So you, you always are, it's fairly close. So you already kind of knew that this is the case. And that is that the, the closed loop gain is not that sensitive to the open loop gain. As long as our overall loop gain is fairly large, it's not that big of a deal. Now, if our overall loop gain is small, that's not true. If our overall loop gain is small, then it does matter. How would our overall loop gain be small? If we're trying to do something ridiculous, like build an off-amp circuit that has a gain of a million, that's a case where we're going to have a small loop gain. So if we have like a gain of a million off-amp, then yes, that off-amp is going to be very sensitive to these differences in open loop gain. And we're going to have to, if we really want to make that work and be accurate, we're going to have to choose an op. We're going to have to pay a lot for a good op-amp. Um, uh, the other thing is if we have, if in fact, we get a really, really, really low um, open loop gain. If we have a really low um, open loop gain, then, then it'll be sensitive to that too, and that makes sense, right? If we have a gain of five, then of course, you know, changes in, you know, if we double a gain of five to a gain of 10, that's actually gonna have a pretty big difference in, in the overall accuracy of that circuit. But, but this, is, this is why we can sort of get away with having op amps that don't really have very accurate open loop gains. It's also the reason we can get away with op amps that have nonlinear open loop gains. So, open loop gains that are vary as a function of amplitude, of magnitude, or frequency. We can still kind of get away with that because we clean up. We we clean that up by a factor of one over the loop gain. So, um, <clears throat> okay. But so that's the sensitivity of the closed loop gain to changes in the open loop gain. Let's also, if we go back to equation one point four zero, and we take the derivative with respect to um, to the uh, to B, if we take the derivative with respect to the feedback path gain, what we get then is we get that the derivative. Oops, sorry. We get that the derivative of. Oops. The derivative of A with respect to A, the derivative of our closed loop gain with respect to closed loop gain, is going to be equal to or about equal to the derivative of B with respect to B. So what this means is that our open loop gain is proportionally sensitive to changes in our feedback path gain. Of course, if you think about it, you already know that, right? So this doesn't attenuate. We rely on this, right? If you change, if you have a, in a non-inverting, or if it, in an inverting amplifier, if you have a resistor, a voltage divider that divides by two, you're gonna get a gain of two. And if you have one that divides by four, you're gonna get a gain of four. So you already kind of know that, of course, as you, as you, if you have a change in this feedback path gain, uh, your overall um, your overall closed loop gain is going to be directly sensitive to that. And what this means is that 
if we have a 5% error in our resistor that's used to make this, this uh, feedback path gain, that means we're going to have a 5% error in the overall closed loop gain of our amplifier circuit. Again, you probably already knew that. You could already probably realize that from having built off amp circuits in the past. But it's important. Basically, what this means is that we have to be careful about having precision when it comes to choosing components that make the feedback gain. We do not necessarily have to be accurate with precision when it comes to components that have a forward, op amps that have a forward, uh, sorry, an open loop gain. So the open loop gain, we're okay if it's a little squirrely, but the feedback gain, no. We gotta make sure that's accurate. We gotta make sure those resistors are not sensitive to temperature. We gotta make sure those resistors are nice and linear, all these sorts of things. Otherwise, we'll have, we'll directly see those errors in the feedback path show up in the in the overall closed loop gain of our amplifier system. Okay, so one thing to talk about is that, um, and this is just really quickly, nonlinear distortion. Most amplifiers, most off amps, don't actually have a fixed gain across all amplitudes. So um, a lot of times the gain that you'll see um, in an op amp, rather than having a nice linear gain like this, um, you know, input voltage versus output voltage. Instead, what you're going to have is something that tends to kind of attenuate a little bit and die off. So you'll have, a lot of times you'll have a nonlinear gain. So whereas the gain of your op amp, and again, this, this is drawn exaggerated. The slope of this is probably going to be 50,000, 100,000, something like that. Where this, this axis is the input differential. This axis is the output voltage. So although it should be, uh, nice and linear, you know, in the ideal case, and this would have a slope of about 50,000, 100,000, depending on what the open loop gain of the system is, it's actually not linear. So in almost all op amps, so you're, you're typically going to have at higher voltages, you're going to have a reduced, um, you're going to have a reduced open loop gain in your op amp. And these nonlinearities, when you amplify a signal, if you have a nice clean signal like this, when you amplify them, what you're going to get is something and of course, I'm exaggerating. All these things drawn here are going to be kind of exaggerations. But when you amplify that, you're going to get something that kind of looks like this. Kind of trying, right? So essentially, rather than these being nice sharp sawtooth, they're going to kind of roll off near the tops. Of course, that's exaggerated, but it's something to keep in mind because these distortions in the op amp, especially these distortions, these nonlinearities, are going to create. You know, if you take, if you look at the shape of this versus the shape of an actual crisp design, this change in shape, if you look at the series expansion of this function, is going to create an amplitude, it's going to create an air amplitude signal at a certain, at certain frequencies, more than others. So this will, in, having this nonlinearity will inject noise in the output of your op amp. And sometimes, depending on how this happens, that injected noise can be an issue. One thing to note, particularly audio applications. Audio applications, these nonlinearities can become very noticeable. Human ears are very sensitive to even small amounts of power at certain frequencies. So these nonlinearities in an audio signal amplification will create noise, off-frequency noise, that your ears can be very perceptive to, which means for those applications where you're really sensitive to those harmonics, um, you want to buy an amplifier that has a really nice linear, uh, really nice linear amplification. And it doesn't so much matter if, you know, it doesn't have to be an open loop gain of any particularly huge number. It just has to be an open loop gain that's relatively constant as a function of the output voltage. So that's the key thing, is as long as it's a constant gain, if it's less than infinite, that's fine. You're not going to quite get your ideal gain that you're expecting. But as long as it's linear, you shouldn't have this kind of distortion. Nonlinearities create these distortions. They inject noise into your system. Sometimes that can be a problem. It's something you got to know. It's something you got to keep in mind. So if you build a system with an op amp and you notice you start having noise, um, especially noise at certain harmonics of the frequency you're looking at, it could be due to this sort of nonlinearity in the system. Okay, that's all I'm going to go on. That's all I'm going to talk about that. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, actually, we're going to take a break. Let's stop there. I'm going to make sure this video recorded okay. I'm going to check it. Let's stop, take a break, take a breather, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about circuit topologies. It's a very important topic, circuit topology. So. <laughs>